Dayman. Dayman. Oh. Oh. Fighter of, of the, the night, night man. man. Oh. Oh. Champion of karate and friendship for everyone. Dayman. Dayman. Oh. 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 Really good stuff, Master guys. Really good. of the night man. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, viewers of all ages, to the millions listening at home, to the little kids bouncing the wall, bouncing the ball outside my house. Woo! This is the Everything and Nothing Show. I'm just one of your hostess with the mostest, Clayton Kisso, and I'm of course accompanied by the rest of the Maelstrom gamers with the bad boy himself, Clayton Kisco. <laughs> well, uh, um, um, bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Bad boys, bad boys. Alright, that's up. And, of course, I'm accompanied by the Enigma, Ian King. Well, hello, Mr. Clayton. Yes, I like great. your beard stuff. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Great, great bow. I wish you got people listening on the podcast at home. You guys can just listen to the, you just see the great bow and everything. Just watch us. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> This is harder than it looks, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's hard. Hey, you gotta you got start talking about, like, you know, subscribing and saying hey and all that other kind of bullshit. <laughs> all right, you ready? All right, ready? I think you take it away. Right, go ahead. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everyone in between, from the weird homeless guys out there picking their nose to all Alan and Cannon and the rest of the millions of viewers watching at home, Welcome to the Everything and Nothing Show. I am just one of your hosts with the mostest, Clayton Kisco, and I'm accompanied, of course, by the rest of the Maelstrom Gamers. We have on our pod podcast today, the bad boy, Steve Landis. <laughs> He's just smiling. All right, great. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Steve. <laughs> Next up, we have the man that you hear, but you don't <laughs> see until we get 40 more dollars on Patreon.com slash Maelstrom Gamer. Only, only a dollar. We'll get you closer to that. The Enigma, Ian Kane. Do I rebound? I think I rebound. Yeah, I would rebound. Oh. I think that's good. What's going on, fellas? Pretty good. Uh, this is a very special Maelstrom uh, Gamer presented everything and nothing show. We have, uh, well, it's a Friday night, first of all, and we have a couple drinks handy. So, uh, I, stay. I don't know what you guys talking about. I don't drink. Come for the topics, but stay for the entertainment because it's going to get a little bit more funky as the topics go on. I promise you that. Um, for those of you guys joining us don't know the form of the show, it's pretty simple. Each one of the Maelstrom Gamers, we hop onto Skype. We each bring a dis uh, topic for our discussion, but more importantly, for your entertainment. You'll get laughs. You'll chuckle, similar to your chuckling probably right now, watching Steve smile with his awesome beard and I just hat. Feel he looks like you a lot like smile me. when you have a beard. I just, just feel like you have to smile. You just got to <laughs> smile. You look funny as shit. <laughs> so, each topic is uh, doled out Monday through Friday, topic by topic, and then the whole episode with all the topics and all the videos uh, can be found on Saturday. Each one of these topics are on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash maelstromgamers. You can get them for free, and all that's for free. If you want it early and you'd like to support us, you can go on to patreon.com slash maelstromgamers, and over there you can give us just as low as a dollar a month, and that money will get you all sorts of different prizes uh, and rewards for, for supporting us, basically. And that money also gets back and goes back into the show. Uh, we'll get better mics. We'll get better uh, webcam stuff. Uh, we'll Video be able to cards. do some more stuff. Video cards for, for Steve uh, so that we can stream. Uh, and listen, if you don't have money, that's okay, too. You can go. Uh, there's other free ways to support us. You can go on our Facebook page, our Instagram page, our Twitter page, and you can follow us. You can like us. You can subscribe you can comment. All that stuff really, really helps. Man, and let me tell you, more and more people are doing it, and this is awesome. We're we're getting up there in Twitter followers. We're getting up there in likes. Uh, I'm really loving all the support from everybody, so really thank you. Thank you a lot. And if you haven't had enough from us, uh, you can get a little bit more of us. We live stream our games, especially League of Legends, uh, and you can catch that on YouTube.com slash Maelstrom Gamers. Uh, look, we're not the best, but we're certainly not the worst, right, guys? We are... Entertaining. Entertaining. Thank you. Okay, we are entertaining. We'll get it. We'll get it eventually. Eventually, I'm just going to say this stuff. You're going to be saying it with me the entire time. We're not going to miss a beat. It's going to be amazing. We are entertaining. Yeah. yeah. So that's the intro. Um, we're, 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 let's get started on this this episode. And I'm going to go with uh, Ian. I'm going to go with you, you first. Ian, Nick, why don't you give us our topic here? Okay, so uh, you, know, you know I like to like blast into the past and kind of figure out how... We all were created and where we're at today. So I want to know, what are some big decisions 
uh, that you made in your life that got you here today? Like some some big uh, choices that you had to decide between. Some giant forks in the road that really got you on one path <laughs> it's as like, opposed hey, to another. A or B. So yeah. Um, if you guys like, uh, if there's one that jumps out at you, go for it. I can start it off. Ian. Yeah. Why don't you start it off, Ian? Okay. Well. Um, there's actually a few of them. So one that I always kind of revert back to is uh, back when I was in my early 20s, um, I actually was going to school, uh, to college, and working multiple jobs. I was working at a bar as a bar back at the um, beach as uh, renting out jet skis and teaching people how to ride jet skis. And uh, I was cutting back my hours uh, at school. So... I sat there, I was like, okay, well, I had to pay for things, I had to survive, I had to do all this stuff, because um, when I moved out of my parents' house, they didn't pay for anything. The only thing that my dad ever said was, hey, I'll pay your student loans. Um, he said that you could stay at the house, you always have a roof over your head if you want to stay here. I was like, no, I'm out, I'm going to go live my life. So um, while, uh, while working at the beach, my old boss gave me an offer. He said, hey, I want to go open up another business that he used to do where he was a uh, tour guide in South Africa and in, in Alaska. And he wanted me to move into his house, take over the business, run it, do all this stuff, and he was going to charge me rent. So, And I sat there and I really thought about it for a long time. I'm like, okay, is this going to be my life? Granted, people always said, hey, you have the life. You literally sit at the beach, I had a little tiki hut and everything. I had longer hair, grew it out and shit. But um, I was like, do Lean I... Lean with really long hair. This? What's that? Lean with long hair. Yeah, yeah. Luscious blonde locks. Three times I grew it up. Wonderful. And, uh, Did you ever do this? Uh, only when I came out of the water. I was like... <laughs> I can imagine it right now because I've seen it come out of the water. <laughs> and before. I did a little bit of this. Oh, dang. Oh, <laughs> snap. No, but uh, it, it was a major life choice. What's that? Steve's just smiling. It's, uh. He didn't say anything. So it was a major life choice that I made that uh, uh, I, I told him, I said, well, wh when am I going to have time to go to school? And he said, school is for certain people. And so, yeah, and I, I sat there and literally that's when I made up my mind. I was like, okay, I'm not going to be a beach bum, which my dad called me all the time. Yeah. Said, uh, well, school is for me. And I said, I'm going to cut back my hours. So I ended up cutting back my hours at both jobs and going back to school full time after almost a year of being part time, and I changed my major, and uh, that was one of those major life changing decisions. I mean, I could be honestly right now not talking to you guys sitting at a beach. Uh, <laughs> Wait, that sounds better. That sounded that yeah, came I'll, off as I'll like, take, look, I don't need to be with you guys. I could be on a beach. <laughs> It'd be nice to drop. A I don't card. need you guys. I don't need to be talking to to Why beard beard headed fucks I, right now. Yeah, <laughs> beach but, right now. Hey, but the thing is that so. It, it, who drank my drink? <laughs> if you saw some of the people, like, I, no disrespect if anyone ever watches this from the beach or anything, but they, they would be in their 50s or 60s, leather skinned, still doing the same job they've been doing for 30 years, poor as shit, uh, barely surviving. Um, some have kids, some don't, and they're just major alcoholics and and just getting nowhere in life. Like that, I, and yeah. I'm not saying like it's a terrible life, but it just wasn't a life I wanted. You know, um, and I, I, I literally, I thought about it very long and hard, but it was that split second. I didn't even make, make up my mind. I was like, holy shit, I'm 21 years old being offered almost pretty much to own a company. I would be my own boss. Granted, my boss would have been out of the country, but I had something I would have to do every day and, uh, and no one would tell me what to do. So, uh, that was one of my major life changing things. And I ended up graduating a few years later. And uh, going it down a completely different path, I feel, than what I was kind of headed towards. So what, what's some major forks that you guys had in uh, your decisions to um, decide where you're at today? Hmm. Well, oh. that's a tough one. Because I think when, as I've grown up, I've tried to always path my decision making. I do the same thing. But, I mean, you have those, hey, A or B situations. Absolutely, and so I'm trying to think back on one of the like the largest ones, and I actually remember this is very this is very interesting. Uh, I'm gonna open up a little bit here. You ready for this, guys? We got some. Let's do we it. got some drinks. We're gonna. So, um, 
I, I won't get too open, <laughs> put it that way, but there is there's certain reasons and circumstances why I was, I don't know, I, I put up a lot of walls uh, in my life and around in high school, college, and uh, well into my like career area in terms of relationships. Uh, and so for whatever reason, I just didn't, I didn't really like put myself out there and I, and I was very much kind of not really ready to, for whatever reason, kind of like make that a thing. Right. So it was, it was 2000, it was 2000, 2010. And I was just kind of like starting to gear up. I was like, you know what? Like, this is kind of getting ridiculous. Like I was like 24, uh, about to turn 25. And I was like, I really need to like, just be more comfortable and like kind of allow myself to get hurt, allow myself to be vulnerable and kind of put myself out there and really try as opposed to just kind of like, man, if it happens that, you know what I mean? It's, it's one of, it was one of those situations with relationships with women in general. Um, is this so, when you came out of the closet? Yeah, this is exactly when. <laughs> um, and so, so, I knew it. um, yeah. And so, uh, you know, it was like, it's kind of, it sounds really cheesy. Cause like for a new year's resolution, it was like, all right, new year, going to start this going to really just like not caring. Um, and I, I kind of started before that, but like, um, so, you know, I did, I did my thing and, um, just you, you're dating more, you put yourself on like online dating and stuff like that. Um, and then, and then my cousin, uh, as I've told the story before on the show, my cousin let me know that like she had someone in mind for me to potentially go on a date with. Uh, and so I was like, you know, and, it was, and, and that's what I'm talking about with like the fork in the road. Beca- because I made this decision to just like put myself out there more and just be more daring and allow myself to kind of like try things knowing that I could very well get hurt um, made me – put me in a mindset to be like, and, and it was crazy too because I even had like a, an initial reaction when I read that that note to say no because the old Clay would have been like, no, 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 I, I don't even want to try this, especially a blind date of all things. I was like, no, 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 I don't want to get hurt. I don't want it like this would just be bad. But I was like, no, new Clay is like, fuck it. Yes, we're, we're meeting new people. We're, gonna, we're trying things. We're going out and we're living and, and yada, yada, yada. And then basically that woman that she was talking about was my future wife. So I think that was like a very pivotal like – fork in the road decision that I made to, to live a different lifestyle that really benefited to like uh, my life more than anything else has ever, yeah. ever done it. So, so yeah, that was, that was definitely a huge, a huge uh, decision for me, which what? sounds, it's really funny. It's sad. Cause like the decision is, will you go on this blind date or not? But it really right. was the biggest and best decision, you know, that I could ever make. Well, What's think the about the story. Uh, say yes to everything. Yes. <laughs> yeah, like the movie Yes Man. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, if you think about it, like there's always those little, 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 little forks that yeah. make us where we are today. And now mine was like a little bit more of a major, like, you know, I thought about it for weeks. Yours was a little bit more, you know, quick or uh, um, something not, not, I'm not saying it's spur of the moment, but. My de- okay, so but to put clarity on that, yeah. my decision to, to be open is something I've been struggling with since like college. Right. Um. So actually, probably even before that, and so yeah. it was like it was it was something that was like constantly me trying. Like it was it was a weird situation. We can talk about this a little bit later, but like there was there was everything from self help to to just like how do I get over like a fear and or and irrationality and like I don't know weird paranoia about certain things that like made relationships crumble for me and like fear of rejection, like all this other stuff that I was dealing with. So, well, um, I, I agree with you there on the fear of rejection. Cause I mean, I had that for a long time and, right, and right. I was always a very quiet person, kind of reserved. Um, I didn't put myself out there a lot, but, uh, um, <laughs> Steve is having an amazing and then I, time right now. <laughs> I would just dance with a beard, you know, that's all yeah. I did. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. no, I'm no, listening I, to Michael Jackson right now. I, I, and you guys at the same time. What uh, thriller? <laughs> At least he's honest. I'm not even having fun right now. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, um, I can definitely see. And I have another one that I, I'm going to tell you guys about after uh, Steve-O actually hits us up with some uh, dance moves while he tells us nice. about his forks in the road and things that he decided that made him who he is today and where he is today. Uh, Steve, that's Wait, a cute for you to tell us a story about your biggest decision. Oh, well, I mean, I guess I could, I could go really um, deep and get you guys impressed if you want. Sure. G- get. All right. Get well, the reason impre- why I'm in pharmacy right now is because what happened was, is I started off working at Dog Lovers, and I was probably like 19 at the time, and I had no idea what I was going to do with my life or anything, and um, 
I think at the time, uh, my dad had just gone overseas, and before I le- before he left, I remember the morning he left, I was so sad because it was just like a split-second decision um, that he got to be a private contractor, and he had to leave like the next day, and I couldn't take off work or anything either at the time because um, I guess I just, I just couldn't. He, he had told me that morning, he was at the airport, and he was leaving, and he told me, you know, that morning that he was gone. And I just remember crying and telling him, you know, just to be safe. And while he was over there, and I told him that, you know, I was really looking at, at being like possibly going into pharmacy, being a pharmacist, or being a pharmacy tech. And, you know, um, like I would say, like probably like six months later, he like I, I you know, I was at same job and everything like that working and I got the call from my stepmom saying that you know that he was killed oh. so I remember him telling me before he left you know don't sit on it just do it you know what I mean and so I just I just did I went to I pretty much like after everything was said and done after the two weeks and I just went to um, went to that school and just pretty much didn't do any research on it nothing <laughs> And just and just signed up, you know what I mean, and just and just did it and try to just get my my life forward. So like I probably wouldn't be here right now. My dad never told me to do that, or if something never happened to him or anything. So there you go. Yeah. Those are the forks, man. Like so back you then, have to make that decision. Back in Baines. Boom. Yeah, dude, that's that's crazy. Well, yeah, I, it's funny how and it's and it's cool, like because like Sarah and I have talked about like all the little decisions that would have had to have been made, right, in order for our, like us to cross paths, right. And it's not only with your significant other, but with your friends, your best friends. Like, it's pretty insane the the flow chart that you would have to follow right. in order to see how you kind of met this person or like landed where you are in your life in the current moment. Well, if you think about this, like Rocco and I had plans on going to college together. And, <laughs> yeah, like we we had talked wow. about it and everything, and then we we ended up pretty much part ways a little bit before college, but you know, doing our own thing and going to a college that wasn't too far from where we grew up and everything is where I went. Not like right down the road, but the sure. city over. And then uh, um, another big decision I made. I actually one night. I broke up and moved out of my ex-girlfriend's place. Um, I had been dating her for two years, living with her and a few other people. That's huge. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I made the decision literally about a week or two beforehand. Like, I had been thinking about it a little bit. And uh, the problem was is that we were just coming up on finals in college. And uh, I'm like, holy shit, I don't want to deal with this while I'm trying to go through fi- finals. And so is she. So uh, I waited, and uh, I just said, hey, you know, I'm going to talk to her tonight and say, hey, we just kind of need to figure things out, and I'm just going to go stay with my buddy. And uh, right when I got home, of course, she's sitting there sleeping, and I had just got done working. And again, at that time, I was working multiple jobs, going to school. I had just changed not too long ago, going back to full time, you know, made that big life decision. And another thing was is that my brother had just moved from Tampa like he was here from a lo- for a long time and I always had him like in my backyard and he moved to Texas so mm-hmm. I'm like man all these life things are going on so I said hey we need to talk she started yapping bitching at me and all this other stuff and I just literally right at that mo- moment I just said you know what screw it I'm moving out we're done and I wow. something very I guess shitty kind of think back on my life then is that I grabbed everything I had in that place and I was able to fit it in my Saturn. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So you had a I'm Saturn? Like, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. I had a Saturn. Uh-huh. So literally I had a computer, a computer chair and like three other like tiny boxes and that was it. I'm like, and I'm out, you know? So, um, the best thing I did ever was that because literally a month later I met my wife. And if you think about it, if I would have said yeah, my wife, I could have dragged it on and try to like fix it and all this other bullshit. And she asked like a few times, like, "Hey, you know, she Uh-oh. was trying to fix it." And I was we, like, we "Done." Fret, we and I even told her bit. like she was freaking out. Okay, so we're going back. So um, she was freaking out a little bit. And I even told her that. Uh, <laughs> um, she was trying to stay with me, but I told her, I said, think about two years of your whole life. And I remember telling her this in a stairwell at four in the morning when she c- came over talking to me. It's a blimp of your life. It's a little, little tiny. I know that 
like it's a long time. If you think about two years, is a long time. But you're going to look back on it one day and be like, what was I thinking? Why was I stressing so much over it? You know? Yeah. But that was another yeah. big fork. And I, I'm extremely grateful I did it because if I would have probably tried to make it work for another month, I might not have met, ever met my wife. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So those are like some of my major choices that I made in my life to where I'm actually sitting in this chair today having to be with you guys. Yeah. Do you think do you think there's parallel universes of ourselves who made the opposite choice? Yes. Oh yeah, definitely. Do you think do you think like Steve right now is just like a professional wrestler? Like <laughs> in, in some other parallel universe, this guy is just going, you know something, brother. <laughs> 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 Let me tell you something. Yeah. You. And, like, and like Ian's like some like like Las Vegas like lion tamer is like ah <laughs> for my next trick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he's there's a, like he's a he's a gay lion tamer. Oh, stop it! <laughs> stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got <laughs>